Hello, this is uh, Paul Kapow on the Kapow Radio Show. Kingdom Against Powers of Wickedness. Hey, today, you know, sometimes the Word of God, there's some bizarre things written in there. Today I want to go over this because I was talking about the law for the last several weeks and how how fortunate we are today to have the law written in our hearts. And so the law of God, when we come to Messiah and he renews us, he writes the law of God in our hearts. We have the Holy Spirit indwelling us. And I, I think, I honestly believe a lot of times, you know, we take that for granted, but it wasn't always like that under the law. And not only under the law, but you had no king or ruler or judge over you to, to keep society on a straight path. Well, kind of like the way it is today with a bunch of pagans running the show. But I worry about the Satanists and all that stuff, what they're going to do, because, you know, they worship Lucifer. But one thing I don't have to worry about is my Christian brethren kicking down my front door and uh, slashing my throat because I wrote a book or uh, that they disagree with or uh, I play in a blues band that they don't like. I don't have to worry about my Christian brethren whacking me and doing me harm like that. So this is a weird story. Let's go to Judges uh, chapter 19. It's, it's very strange, but at the end of this book, the, the last line says, uh, in those days there was no kings in Israel and every person just did what they thought was right in their own mind so they just they just did their own thing because they had no they had no king they had no leadership they did have you know the law of god but you know they had the 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 temple out there uh, not the built temple but you know the tent of meeting and stuff uh, and they had the Levites in the priesthood. But, you know, this this was thousands of years ago. And they, they all kind of just strayed away and just, you know, they didn't. My point is they didn't have the law written in their hearts. And, and, and this story kind of really shows that, that, what I've been trying to stress. It's very interesting. In chapter 19, I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but I just want you to get the gist of it. And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel. It starts off with that. There's no king in Israel. That's why this 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 weird incident happens. Uh, that there was a certain Levite, okay? Levite is from the priesthood. He's a priest. And he was on his way to, uh, to the site of Mount Ephraim. And he took him a concubine. Um, not really like a wife, but um, he took him a woman. And she was from Bethel, Bethlehem, Judah. And apparently the concubine played the whore against him. And um, she she went away from him. She, she ran away from him and went to her father's house, back to Bethlehem, Judah. It was, uh, she was there for four months. So we don't give the details of why she was irritated with this uh, Levite priest and why she left him, but she did. And so he goes... And he, it says he went to go speak to her friendly, friendly unto her and to bring her again. So he had a servant with him and a couple of asses and uh, she brought him into her father's house. And then the father of the damsel saw him. He rejoiced to meet him. And anyway, he stays there for a few days and blah, 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 blah. And I'm not going to read the whole story. And here's the deal. We go to nine and he finally leaves this house with his concubine and he goes in verse 11, when they were up by Jabus, the day was far spent. And so his servant said unto him, look, we, we got to go in and stay somewhere. We got to stay in this city of the Jebusites and lodge in it. But this Levite said, no, 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 no. I will not turn aside into a city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gibeah. So this is important because you here you have a Levitical priest. He goes back to get his concubine, to get his woman who ran away from him. And he's traveling out and it's getting late, but he, he will not stay 
in a pagan land. He will not stay in any place that is not of the children of Israel, the, the, the called out nation of God. So what you get here is this tension that the children of Israel or a, a town or a city that's of the children of Israel is going to be better than a pagan town. That's what you're expecting. They're going to be better people. It's just going to be a better experience, right? So he says, we will pass over to Gibeah. So verse 13, and he says it to the servant, come, let's go uh, to one of these places, this lodge all night in Gibeah. And they passed on and they went their way and it got dark and they went to Gibeah and that belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. Remember, Benjamin was the youngest son of Jacob. Benjamin belonged to the tribe of Gen Benjamin, Gibeah. So we're safe. We're, it's a good deal. He's, he's camping out with the children of Israel. He's a Levite. He's a priest on his way to the house of the Lord with his concubine, his woman. And they turned aside to go in and to lodge at Gibeah. And they sat down in the street of the city and there was no one that would take him into the house or give him a place. So, you know, they're going to camp out in the middle of the town square and hang out, spend the night. And there came this old guy from his work out in the field. And he was also of Mount Ephraim. And he traveled to Gibeah, and apparently had a house there. And the men of the place were Benjamites. It says that again, the men of the place were Benjamites. And when he lifted up his eyes, he saw this guy, this Levite in the street with his concubine and his couple of donkeys and his servant. And so the old man says to him, look at where are you going? Where, 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 where are you coming from? What are you doing? And he says to him, we're passing from Bethel, Bethlehem, Judah toward the side of Mount Ephraim from thence am I. And I went to Bethlehem, Judah, and I'm now going to the house of the Lord. So he's on his way to do his uh, priestly Levitical duties at the house of the Lord, right? Everything looks good, right? I mean, there's everything looks peachy. There should be no issue here. And um, so he tells me, because there's no man that receives me into the house. Yet there is both straw and provender for our asses. I have bread, I have wine, I, I, have, I have plenty, I'm cool. I got a lot of stuff, I, I'm good to go. Um, you know, and I'm just gonna camp out here. Now the old man said, look at." Look at peace, peace be to you, but let all your wants lie on me. Let me take care of you. Don't, don't, don't sleep in the street. Come home with me. And, and so this is great, great hospitality on this old man. We don't know his name. They just call him in the book of Judges. The writer calls him the old man. <laughs> so this is a great old dude. He goes, look, I'm going to pay for everything. You're going to eat my food. My, I'm going to take care of your animals. Just come on. Come home with me. So he takes him to the house and he, and he gave um, food to the donkeys and he washed everybody's feet and they ate. They drank. They were having a good time, right? And um, so now as they were making their hearts merry, you know, they're drinking wine and they're talking and, well, you know, it's great stuff. Behold, the men of the city. Now, who lives there? What city was this? It was the Benjamites. It was a city of Benjamin. The, so these were Benjamites. These were Is, Israel, the tribe of Israel, Benjamites, right? One of the 12 tribes. So these guys go to the house and the Bible says they're certain sons of Belial, which means wickedness or evil. So they're, they're sons of Satan. They're worthless. They're sons of the devil, they beset the house round about and they beat at the door. And so they spake to the old man of the house and the old man, and they said, look at, give us the man who's here, the Levite that's here, that came into your house that we may screw him. We might have sex with him, that we might have a homosexual um, orgy with him. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like Sodom and Gomorrah way back in Genesis? Sounds just like Sodom. Sounds just like Sodom. But here it is. We have some homosexual guys, sons of Belial, that are in the city of that 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 belongs to the tribe of Benjamin. 
it's a it should be a, a godly city the, these it's that's the nation god called to himself but here you have sons of belial they're benjamites they're not these aren't pagans uh, these aren't sodomites in the sense of of, of sodom they're sodomites in the sense of, of what they practice but they want to have sex with the with the priest that's pretty crazy huh so they demand to bring him out that we might uh, know him. And that word is a euphemism of have sex with him. And the man, the master, this old man, he went, he goes out to them and he goes, look at, look at, look at my brethren. He calls them my brothers. They're, they're Benjamites. He goes, no, I pray to you, don't do this wicked thing. Seeing that this man has come into mine house, do not do this folly. Behold, here is my daughter. Now, th this is some hard stuff to deal with. The old man goes, look, at here's my kid. Here's my daughter. Um, and and my guest, the Levite's woman, his concubine, I'll, I'll bring them out to you and you can humble them. It means to uh, abase. <clears throat> In other words, you can rape and pill you can do whatever you want to their, their bodies. I, you know, Really? Like it says, it starts off in those days. There's no king. Um, and at the end of the book, it says everybody does what's right in their eyes. So I guess they thought this would be the right thing to do. Let's let's give the women up. Um, I, I, If I was a woman, I wouldn't want these guys uh, protecting me. <laughs> uh, they're not, uh, yeah. <laughs> where's, the, <laughs> where's the man protection here? Yeah. So now uh, I'll give them to you and you do with what you want. But uh, to this Levite, my guess, do not do such a vile thing. So they want to they want to rape the Levite. They want to have homosexual sex with him against his will. Um, they want to sodomize him and do all kinds of nasty things with him. These are Benjamites, children of God. These are Israelites that were called to be God's nation. They had the law of God at the time, but it wasn't written in their hearts. They just had it, and you either obeyed it and you didn't. And I think it's pretty clear they weren't obeying it. Um, but these two guys, the Levite and the old man, give up the, the women. They give up the daughter and the concubine. It says, but the, but the men would not, would not listen to them, but they took the guy's concubine. So they didn't take the old man's daughter, but they took the, the old man's concubine they brought her forth unto them, and they knew her. Same word is yada. It uh, they literally uh, raped her, raped her, raped her, raped her over and over again. Gang raped her, and they abused her. They raped her and they abused her. Uh, they they overdid it. They 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 maltreated her. They caused her pain, and they afflicted her and they defiled her, and they abused her all the night, all night. So they gang raped her all night. Now, these are, once again, I got to reiterate, these are people that have the law of God. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. She was still alive, barely, barely alive. They raped her and abused her all night. These are men that first wanted to commit sodomy and uh, they settled to just raping uh, a stranger's woman all night. Men of God, children of God, uh, he says, you're my people, you're my nation, you're representing me. This is the human, this is the human that God had created. This this is what they do. They had the law of God. Moses had given them the law. They this isn't this isn't a question of this right or wrong. They knew, but they didn't give a rat's butt about it. So you know, my point is when I when I say this stuff, we do take it for granted that the law of God written in our heart. I know there's nobody listening to the sound of my voice that would agree with this action. Nobody. Uh, as Christians, we find this repulsive, absolutely repulsive, and um, and I hate these guys. You know, I hate these guys for doing that. So it's it's so repulsive to me. I, I can't stand them, uh, let alone protect them. So, because that's because the law's in the heart. I already know that this is 
this is not of God. This is way, way, way evil. And then the woman in the dawning of the day, uh, this is sad. She comes back and she falls at the door of the old man's house until it was late, light. And then when this guy, when the Levite rose up in the morning, he sees her laying there at the doorway. And uh, she, she, he, he thinks that she's fallen down at the door of the house and her hands were upon the threshold. That's sad. Recently, spiritual attacks on innocent people have increased considerably. This is partly due to society's transformation into a satanic cult. Most people are clueless or hopeless in combating this spiritual mayhem. We wish to offer two good books to overcome these attacks. First, Demons in My Marriage Bed, a true story of spiritual warfare, offers one of the most effective training systems in combating spiritual darkness in order to gain personal freedom. Second, Eyes to See Unseen Enemies teaches how to see the hidden dangers which are all around us, even in places we would least expect them. Both books can be purchased on Amazon.com as a paperback or ebook. It is our desire that you will take advantage of these opportunities to increase your effectiveness in spiritual warfare and learn how to fight back instead of being a victim. We'll see you on the battlefield. I mean, this is a picture of just, it's just horrible. She's raped all night, abused all night by men of God, right? The nation nation God calls out, the Benjamites. And um, she tries to make it back to this house and her hands are, are on the threshold. She couldn't quite get in. And uh, so this Levite being very, um, you know, number one, he gave her to these guys to abuse all night while he stayed inside safe. Uh, so this is his mentality. He says up to her, get up, up, and let's be going. She's abused all night. And he's like, yeah, get up, let's go. But she didn't answer. And because she was dead, but this, this idiot, this priest of God who gave up this woman, uh, he's yelling, get up. That's all he cares about. I got to, I got to go to the house of the Lord and do my deal. So then this Levite took her up, put it upon his donkey and, uh, he, he took off. And when he came into his house, he took a knife. He took a knife. The Levite took a knife. I want you to understand this. And he got, he laid hold of his dead concubine and he cut her into, uh, he cut her and her bones into 12 pieces. And he sent her these 12 pieces of her dead body to the other tribes of Israel. To the 12 tribes of Israel. That means he sent a piece back to Benjamin. Now, I, I, I don't know what the mail system was in that day. I do know they didn't have UPS and FedEx. I, you know, I don't know how they, you know, how they operated, but there was somebody <laughs> who was like a mail carrier who delivered these, these pieces of this dead body to, to the 12 tribes. I think that's, Pretty interesting. And it was so that uh, all that saw it said, here's what they said. The rest, of, the rest of Israel said, there was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider it, take advice, and speak your minds. Now, when I read the story, I don't think it's even a question. I think God should have done just like he did with Sodom and sent fire and brimstone on Gilead, uh, whatever, wherever we were at, uh, uh, Gibeah, and totally destroyed all the, the, the tribe of Benjamin. That's what I think should have happened. Uh, because what's the difference between this and Sodom outside of, well, well, Sodomites were, you know, they're pagans. Well, yeah, but these guys are supposed to be men of God. So, so was this Levite supposed to be a priest of God? But that doesn't happen. All the children of Israel go out. They gather together. They talk about this stuff. So then they, they propose, hey, we're going to go um, fight against Benjamin. So I'm not going to read bore you with all the numbers and stuff. But they go out three 
separate times and get their butt handed to them. Because the Benjamites were expert at the sling. They were left-handed, and when they threw a stone, it always hit. They, it says that never missed. So they were outstanding warriors, and they killed thousands of the rest of Israel. But when you read the story, you're going, what in the world is Yahweh doing this whole time? And why is he allowing this? So this is one of these things that I don't care what scholar or what biblical philosopher or commentator could write. I will never understand this story. You know, it's one of those, I will never get this. Uh, It's just so bizarre. Yeah, it's just so bizarre. So they go up and they fight against Benjamin. What they do is they go up and the Levite, the husband of the concubine that was slain, says, I came into Gibeah that belongs to to Benjamin and my concubine to lodge. And the men of Gibeah rose against me and beset the house round about me by night and thought to have slain me. Now this is new because the, the, the thing says they wanted to know him and have sex, but now he said they wanted to kill me. So maybe he's a liar too. I don't know. But now he adds, he adds that they wanted to kill me, slay me with deadly intent and my concubine. Have they forced? Okay. Have they forced? The word is a primitive root, and it means the idea to depress um, in a base. That she is dead, da, dead. And so he says, I took my concubine and cut her in pieces and sent her throughout the country of the inheritance of Israel, for they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. So the Levite knew the law of God. He, he's a priest and said, This is against the law of God, and it's punishable by death. Behold, ye are all children of Israel. Give here your advice and counsel. He doesn't tell them what to do. He basically says, what do you think? And all the people arose as one man. All of them were like me talking. All of them found this so repulsive. They found it so out there that they said, we will not. We will not go home. None of us. Uh, we won't. We won't even go back to our house. But now this shall be the thing which we shall do to Gibeah. We will go up by lot against it. So they drew lots, and um, yeah, they drew lots. So who's going to go up? So they got thousands of men to go up to Gibeah and go talk to these guys, right? So all the men of Israel, right, that were picked by lot. There was thousands. It was like. A thousand out of ten thousand, you know, and they got food and all this stuff, and they go to the tribe of Benjamin in Gibeah, right? So shall um, all the men, all the men of Israel, were gathered against the city, and they were knit together as one man. So what that tells me is that the rest of Israel was so appalled, they were so they were upset, like I am, at this at this deed. That there wasn't one saying, eh, it's kind of iffy. Maybe she wanted it. She wouldn't have been wearing that, uh, you know, that burqa if she didn't want it. You know what I mean? Nobody was doing that. They were all saying, this is horse crap. And we got to do something about it. All of them did. So, and the tribes of Israel sent men through all the tribe of Benjamin. They said, what wickedness is that that, that you have done? among you what what is this all about <clears throat> now here's this 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 blows me away because in, in verse 13 of chapter 20 it says now therefore deliver us the men the children of belial those wicked guys those sons of satan those those ass clowns that did this deliver them to us. you guys know who they are Deliver them to us, which are in Gibeah, that we might kill them and put away evil from Israel. Because see, that's what God commanded. God commanded eye for eye, tooth for tooth. 
if you were to kill somebody, uh, premeditated murder like that was it by accident, uh, you had to be put to death. You cannot kill a human being. You can't do this kind of stuff. And you certainly can't be a sodomite and you certainly can't be a rapist. So they're asking, go get these men. You know who these, you know who Bubba is. Get these children, these sons of Satan, and we're going to kill them, right? What do you think the answer should have been from Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, one of the called out of God? What do you think the answer would have been? It would have been absolutely, absolutely. And they should have went and got those guys who committed the crime and turned them over to the rest of Israel. They should have been put to death and have been done with it. But nay, nay, the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of the brethren. It doesn't say why. It doesn't say why. So I don't get it. It's one of these things that I don't understand. Just like I don't understand why lightning and, and brimstone and hailstone didn't just destroy them. But it did. Children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities into Gibeah. And so they're going to go to battle against the children of Israel. They said, not only are we not going to turn over these sons of Satan to us, we're going to fight you. Um, they're going to protect these sodomites and these rapists and murderers. They're going to, they're going to protect them. See, so it just keeps getting deeper and deeper into nonsense. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time. I'm not going to bore you, but um, there were men of war. They could sling stones and, you know, and, and not miss. They, they were outstanding. So they go to war and Benjamin just kicks the heck out of them. Like in three, three times. And that's the other question I have. What is God doing here? Well, I mean, why is he allowing <laughs> Israel? The, what they're doing is they're 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 beseeching God. They're going to the they're they're going to the, the tabernacle, and they're 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 doing sacrifices and fasting. They're going, do we go against our brethren, Benjamin? And the answer is always yes. But then when they do, they get whacked. And I don't understand that. Why you know how, how God's going? Yeah, go go do that. Go go get them because they were bad. And then you're the one that gets punished. So that's all we know of the story. I, maybe there's more to it, um, or I'm missing something here. I don't know. I've read a couple of commentaries on it, and nothing satisfied in, in this story. It's just a bizarre, weird story, but it's absolutely true, or it wouldn't be in here. And I, you know, I don't know what to make out of it outside of what I'm trying to tell you. I just thank God we have the law written in our hearts. It's like it's all crazy. Um, yeah, they go, they ask the Lord, okay, who's going to go fight against Benjamin first? He goes, Judah. So God answers him. Yahweh answers and says, Judah. So the children of Israel rose up in the morning. They go there. They, uh, they get all dressed up to, for battle. And guess what? The children of Benjamin came forth out of that city, Gibeah, the one that raped and killed this woman. And guess what? They destroyed to the ground of the Israelites that day. 20 and 2,000 men. So how would you feel if you were uh, under the law of Israel and, you know, you're trying to do the right thing and one of your brethren does something stupid like that and you inquire of God, yeah, go up, go up against them. And uh, you go, well, what tribe should go up against, you know, Benjamin? They go, send Judah. God says send Judah. And you're, you know, you're, you're part of that tribe. Okay, what would you think? You would think that you were going to destroy these guys because they were evil, right? You wouldn't think that God was going to allow 22,000 of your brethren to die while the, the bad guys, the sons of Belial got away, right? 20, 22,000. It's just, it's just hard to fathom. So then the people, the men of Israel, encourage themselves Again, okay, we could do it. We could do it, right? So they do. They do the same thing. So then it says the the children of Israel went up and they they cried before the Lord all, all night, and they they asked counsel before Him, saying, "Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother?" 
And the Lord said, go up against him. So I don't know what's going on with Israel right now. Maybe they were just as wicked. Maybe, I, I have no idea. It's just bizarre. And the children of Israel came near and guess the children of Benjamin the second day. And guess what? Benjamin came out from Gibeah the second day and whooped them again down to the ground. And this time they killed 18,000 men. And, oh, and by the way, these men weren't just regular men. They were all warriors. They all, they all drew the sword. They were all trained in war. Then all the children of Israel and all the people went up and came to the house of God. This is the third time they come to God. They sit before him. They fast all day. And they offer burnt offerings and peace offerings. They do all the ritual stuff they, they require to do. And they inquire of Yahweh. Uh, says, for the Ark of the Covenant of God was there in those days. And, then, and Phineas, who was, is like the grandson of Aaron, stood before the Ark in those days. And he says, Look at, should we go out again to the battle of Benjamin, my brother, or shall we cease? Uh, we keep, we're, we're losing. And the Lord says, no, you go up tomorrow. I'll deliver them to thy hand. So this is the third time. So they go up and this time they, they set liars and wait. They, they plan more strategically. I'm not going to bore you with the details, but anyway, when Benjamin came out, they whacked Benjamin, killed a bunch of people and destroyed 25,100 men, all that drew sword, um, and Benjamin. And uh, so anyway, they set the, the, the city on fire. They did all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. And um, they closed the Benjamites roundabout. You know, the rest of this that I'm skipping over is the details of this battle. They chased them, trode down with ease over uh, against Gibeah toward the sunrise. So God finally gave him the victory uh, the third time around. Now, why he didn't do it the first time around, I don't know. Why he didn't do it the second time around, I don't know. Why he didn't just destroy him like Sodom, I don't know. But it's, it's, it's a very frustrating story. And it gets worse. Uh, there fell a Benjamin, 18,000 men. And they fled to the wilderness and stuff. And anyway, it goes on and on. Uh, and then the people came to the house of God and abode there all night. They lifted voices and wept sore. Why were they crying? Why was Israel crying? After they won, why, why were they crying? Here's why they cried. They says, why has this come to pass in Israel that there should be today one tribe lacking in Israel? So that was the big concern that now that we destroyed Benjamin. Uh, I think there was only 600 people left of that tribe of Benjamin, only 600 men left. Now that we utterly destroyed that tribe, now we don't have 12 tribes of Israel and have 11. That's the big concern rather than what they did to this, this woman. Um, and it came to pass on the morrow that the people rose early and they built there an altar and they did all that stuff they had to do. And they said, who is there all among the tribes of Israel that came not with the congregation of the Lord? Right? This is what they said. Here's their plan. For they made a great oath concerning that came up. Everybody that came up to Mizpah to do this to Benjamin said, um, you know, we're, we're not going to give our daughters to Benjamin ever. See, so by, by Benjamin not being able to um, marry and mate with other Israelites, uh, the, the, the tribe would totally be destroyed. Right? Um, so anyway, they had made an oath also that anybody who didn't come up with them to fight would be put to death. And the children of Israel, <laughs> so this is one of those two wrongs make a right, right? Three wrongs make a right, four wrongs. We just keep doing wrongs and it's just going to be right at some point, right? And the children of Israel repented them for Benjamin, their brother, and said, there is one tribe cut off from Israel, wah, wah. And uh, how shall we do for wives for them that remain? Seed, we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them of our daughters to wives. So they made, they made these oaths before God. They go, we're not giving them our daughters. And uh, now they can't reproduce that tribe. 
Um, and then, so here's the plan. So, so, so someone came out with a great idea and they go, which one of the tribes of Israel didn't come with us to Mizpah to fight? Which one? And behold, there came none to the camp from, oh, we got our scapegoat, Jabesh Gilead. Nobody from Jabesh Gilead came. Now, these innocent people who just had to stay home and said, uh, you know, I'm going to go fishing or whatever they're doing. Now they become the target. For the people were numbered, and behold, there were none of the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead there. Aha! And the congregation sent thither 12,000 men. Uh, the, 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 the meanest, baddest warriors they could find. And they commanded them, saying, Go and kill everybody in Jabesh Gilead. And kill the women and the children too. <laughs> so this is the reaction. <clears throat> well, we, you know, we're crying because we had to go fight Benjamin, who did this thing. But now these innocent people, because they didn't go with us, and do, now we got to go kill them. So they do. And they found among the inhabitants of Jabesh Gilead four hundred young, beautiful virgins that had not known or had sexual relations, same word they used for those men wanting to know the priest, who had not known no man. They were virgins. They had never had sexual intercourse. And they found these 400 virgins um, <laughs> and so then they took them into the camp to Shiloh, which is the land of Canaan. Now remember, they killed their parents and their siblings. They killed everybody, male and female, except for these 400 virgins. And the whole congregation sent some to speak to the children of Benjamin that were in the rock by Remon and, and, and called peacefully unto them. Hey, I know you guys, uh, you know, it could have just, this whole thing could have been circumvented if you just would have given over the the sons of Satan to us, the whole the, I mean, thousands of lives could have been saved if you just would have done the right thing. But no. So they come to Benjamin and uh, they say, "Look at, we're going to give you these wives, which we saved the lives of the women of Jabesh Gilead." And yet, so they suf suffice them not. And the people repented for Benjamin because the Lord had made a breach in the tribes of Israel. So now it's, it's God's fault. Yahweh had made a breach in the tribes of Israel, and so they were all upset. Now it's God's fault. Now, it, wasn't, it wasn't Benjamin's fault for wanting to sodomize a priest and and then rape his concubine. Well, no, it wasn't that. Oh, and then it wasn't his fault for not just giving those men over. No, it wasn't their fault. It's God's fault. And, and then, so they said there must be an inheritance for them that escaped out of Benjamin, that a tribe not be destroyed. But we can't give them wives of our daughters. Cursed be that giveth a wife to Benjamin, they say. Behold, there's a feast of the Lord in Shiloh. So anyway, what they did is they took these 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 young gals and uh, the, the, what they did is there's a feast and <laughs> they told the children of Benjamin, look at why don't you go and hide out in the vineyards and we'll pretend we don't see you. And then behold, if the daughters of Shiloh come out to dance and dances, then come out of the vineyards and catch you, every man his wife. Oh, they're used to raping people, so that's easy for them. And uh, of the daughters of Shiloh and go to the land of Benjamin. So it shall be when their fathers or their brethren come unto us to complain that we will say to them, check this out. So <laughs> here's the fathers and the brothers of these, these women. And when they come to the, the elders of Israel to complain, hey, the Benjamites are still in, stole my kid. They'll say unto them, 
be favorable unto them for our sakes, because we reserve not to each man his wife in the war, for ye did not give unto them at this time that ye should be uh, guilty. Oh, wow. wow, wow. So you talk about a cluster. This is a cluster of a story that, uh, amazing. And so the children of Benjamin did so, and they took them wives according to the number of them that danced. And there's a good reason not to go out dancing at night without a chaperone because the Benjamites are going to get you. Whom they caught and they went and returned unto their inheritance. And then they repaired the cities and they dwelt in them. Everything was peachy. And the children of Israel departed thence. At that time, every man to his tribe and to his family. Man, you see the mentality is like, let's just do this bad thing and this bad decision and this bad thing and this bad to make it all work. And they all went out from uh, every from thence every man to his inheritance. Now it ends, the book of Judges ends in verse 25 and it says this. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So with a blanket statement like that, you can read a bizarre story like this and go, yeah, but they, they thought they were doing the right thing. And that's it. That's it, you know. I don't know, um, you know, live in a different culture, a different time, a whole different deal. Um, I don't even know anything about what, what that would be like back then or with children of Israel or, you know, yeah, I don't know anything about that. I just know today that that law in your heart, that, that that's, that's, everything they did was repulsive. Everything, you know, everything they did to even, to, to save the situation was repulsive so what are you going to say just a bizarre story I thought I'd share with you and you'd go huh that's weird why would you talk about that I don't know I'll talk to you next week with some more bizarre stuff I think alright good night